Hello fashion sewers, I hope you are well. I'm Colleen G. Lee, if you are new to my channel. Hello. In this video, I'm going to be refashioning this jacket. And I decided that I'm going to do a cutout. So the cutout is going to happen at the back and then it's going to come round to the front. I haven't done this sort of thing before, so I'm hoping and praying that it's going to work. going to be needing, it's going to be some hand sewing involved in this. I'm, I'm not really sure whether it's possible to do it just by using a sewing machine. Um, this, the, the cutout section which I'm talking about because I want this professional finish to it hence the reason as you see throughout the video why I'm choosing to go for um, a hand sewing technique to finish off the look of the jacket. So we're going to, the first thing I need to do is tell you what supplies you're going to need and some fabrics. I'm going to do a facing to this so it's a bit more of an advanced um, skill level you'll need to do this jacket but I'm quite looking forward to see if it works and see what challenges I come across. So the tools that you're going to need are fabric scissors, a marker and I've got a tailor's chalk here some interfacing and I've also got some spare fabric. We're going to need a seam ripper and a needle and thread, basting thread and some pins as well. So let's get started. So I think the best thing to do is to work on the wrong side of the fabric because I don't want to use my tailor's chalk on the front of the jacket just in case it may stain because the tailor's chalk can do that. So and I'm going to be doing a cutout at the back. I hope it's gonna I hope it's gonna work. Um, I'm just looking at the inside of the jacket and I was thinking maybe having the cutout come from here to the underarm, from the centre back here, from it to the underarm. But I want to make sure I keep the structure of the jacket, so I'm going to make my decision based on the inside of the jacket. As you can see, there's a basing here, and I don't want to cut into that because I don't want to weaken it at all. So I'll probably go for a more curved shape inside yeah more of a curved shape rather than an angled shape is what I was thinking about but no I want to protect that as much as I possibly can I'm going to I think the best way is to release the lining from the bottom of the jacket because you can go through the sleeve no I'm gonna go for the bottom of the jacket yeah I'm gonna go for that Here is the just the back section. So give me to just get my seam up in there. Okay, so I've created an opening now. I'm going to pull my jacket through. I'm just going to chalk in at the moment my shape on just one half of the jacket so that you can see. So it's freehand. And then Yeah, so this is the waistline of the jacket. So I'm thinking here. I don't want to go anywhere near the pocket. I'm just going to take that shape. Oh, 
all the way to about here. That's like a nice shape. And then I'm going to then do a stitch to see what it looks like on the front. So I'm going to get my needle and thread. I said it is a little bit of an advanced technique, but I just want this jacket to look really professional once I have finished. I'm just going to follow my chalk line and then see if I'm happy with the shape on the front of the jacket. So once I've done this, I will turn it to the right side and then have a look in a mirror to see if I am happy with the shaping. If you wanted to use rulers to get your shape, that's fine, you could do that. Just keeping an eye on my shape. Just straight line here, when angled. And I would, I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm gonna stop about here. I don't want to go into the seam. I don't want to go as far as there. I don't want to weaken the seam, so it's best if I stop roughly about here. And then I'll start shaping all of the waistline. That'll be roughly a straight line, just keep going. Need some more thread. I'm going to I'm going to keep going to about here. then once I've done that I will try on my jacket to see if I'm happy with the shape before cutting. Okay, this is going to be the last stitch I'm going to make. And I'm going to turn it to the right side, so I put my hand back into that hole I created. I'll pull my jacket to the right side. It looks pretty scary this, but it's not really. Just about shaking it out and all the arms or the sleeves will start to appear. That's a nice shape actually. So there's a good distance between the 
the basing comes to here. I think that's in balance for what should be a bit there. So I could actually come a little higher if I wish, but I'm just going to keep it at that height for now and try it on and see if I'm happy with the actual shaping that goes all the way to the front. Yeah, okay. Okay, you can see the red tracing of the shape. And I am happy with that. I may just raise it a little bit to where the pin is. I've got enough room where I don't interfere with the facing on the jacket and then I know my natural waistline is here but I think I may be able to but this does have a matching pair of pants but the pants I did well they are too big but um yeah I think I'll keep the cut line here then obviously when it's sewn I'll just take a bit more away so yeah it's a nice shape actually that's a really nice shape so yeah, and as you can see, it is a, it is a fitted jacket. I was, hmm, I was wondering if I might bring this a bit more here. Then if I go past there, I just want to make sure that I, do, I don't want to destroy the shape of the jacket because obviously, if I'm doing this huge cutout, it's going to be a jacket that has to be worn more often buttoned. So, yeah, I think if I just, hmm, I may come to about here, I think. Mm. Yes, I think, yeah, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come to about here. So I'm just gonna put a pin in there. And let's go for it. Yeah, I think it'd be all right. Okay, I've tried the jacket on again for the second time and I have, so the top one here is what I'm going to go for, this shape. So I've, hi I've hired it a little bit towards the pin, it's a good curved shape that I do like and I've brought it all the way around to the front, so I've gone a little bit further in the pocket. I have taken a break very long break literally pulling my hair out <laughs> um, I forgot to film the next section which was to the cut out itself I thought my camera was filming still but it wasn't so I apologize for that section uh, this is just what happens when you're just doing everything by yourself um, so yeah so here is the cut out <laughs> And like I said, I, I, I thought I was filming it and I wasn't. So I'm going to try and not pull the rest of my hair out and um, show you pretend how to cut it out, if that makes sense. So that's what I'm gonna show you, show you next. And I also did a little bit of um, e-stitching as well, because I don't want the, the back of the jacket to gape at all. So those are yeah yeah i'll show you how to do that next sorry about that um i i, I hope it won't um distract you too much and um you find the cutting out an easy process so i'll do my best to kind of show you how to do it okay okay so this is the section of the cut out and what I did was I nipped into it here so I'm following the area where I've actually done the tracing and went all the way around and making sure that my hand was was making I was making sure I wasn't cutting it into the lining so I got all the way around and then came all the way to this point here the centre back seam and then I folded it back that way in order to continue with my cutting and going all the way around. 
like so until I came back to this point here. So like I said, I do apologise for that. So that is what is the cutout now. Looking very exciting. So there we have the cutout. I haven't cut the lining just yet. Um, I just want to make sure that the cutout is the right shape and it fits beautifully and it does. And what I did, I put a, a stitch and an E stitch all the way around because I don't want it to gape. So hopefully that will happen that won't happen. So I've also put it down the sides as well. Because remember it's going to be a, a backless jacket if you, if you like to think of it in those terms. So I just wanted to make sure there's a lot of stability there and it doesn't gape. And just reinforce your corners on both sides and it's ready for the facing. So let's see if I can get a good facing. Um, let's see. Now this is gonna be the tricky part now is getting your jacket to lie flat so that I can cut the facing. Oh, oh this is gonna be more challenging than I thought. So if I put pins in here, let's see, because I, I do want I do want a facing because I just want it to be nice and crisp clean edges. But it all is a little bit reliant on whether or not this is going to lie flat. So let's just see. Yeah. I can feel it's tugging away already, the lining on the side. Okay, that seems to be. It's just not going to. No. So it will be using this section, the cutout, because obviously it did fit at one point. Mm, but because it's been a curve, there will be a little bit of uh, form, more fullness in this area here. So I'm going to have to be careful how I cut this out, which I will show you in a moment. It's a little bit bigger there. Okay, I'm just not going to get this to lie flat, so I'm better off working with the cutout. So I'm going to put a jacket to one side for a moment. Okay. So we know it's going to bit we need to add seam allowance to this as well and we know that because this is a curve that this is going to have to be slightly bigger it's going to fit the jacket I would think and I'm going to give it a little bit of ease Okay. I'm thinking, so let me just think this through for a moment. I think I'm going to get the jacket and just check measurements on the jacket. So let's put that on top. Tape measure. As you can see, it has grown. Okay. 
Okay. And the curve. Let's just move that out of the way for a moment. So okay. I'll just take a measurement from this as well. I'm working to now. Get my fabric again. I already used this for some previous project years ago. Make sure I've just got enough fabric. Okay, so we know that just a bit more. I'm hoping that I don't need any more fabric because I don't have any grey in my stash and more grey that I could use. centimeters three three and a half centimeters the jacket I'm referring to so this is smaller Okay, so this measurement now, this one is 42, so the jacket is one, two, so it's about two, two and a half centimetres bigger, so I need to put that into my calculations when I'm doing this roughly now here. So I'm going to just base it out just a little like so. And I think that should be enough. So what I'm doing here is get my chalk. Let's see if this works. I'm not sure if it's going to work. So I'm going to I think it's best that you actually go bigger when you're doing this sort of thing, when you're refashioning, always give yourself more to work with. Because it can be a little bit of a guesswork. Until you build up your skills and knowledge, I, I believe. There, yeah, I'm happy with that. Shall we have now? And 
Let me share the screen. No, oh, it needs to come down here. Right, I'm going to do that. And I've just crossed my mind now as I'm thinking through this is that because the jacket tapers in towards the hem, towards the waistline, I should say, and it tapers out a little bit to give you shaping for the hips. So I may, let's see, I might, I may have to think about that just a bit more. So I'm gonna give myself quite a lot since I've got this fabric to play with. And then for the bottom, and then I am going to, yeah, just chalk in the shape of this cutter. Let's see what happens. Okay, so let's just go for it. seam allowance. Let's see what happens. Okay, a notch here, so I've got a, a notch there. Let's get the jacket. Right, I'm not going to interface this because I've interfaced the jacket. So let's just see what's going to happen here. Get my jacket. Match up that notch there. Just go around one half and see what happens. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pin all the way around just half of it and then I'm based and then I'm going to baste after that. Okay, oh that's yeah that's kind of yeah that's there happy with that. It's looking good actually. See the match? That bit too. Let's centre back. Yeah, that's okay. So I'm going to base and then I'll come back and show you what I have done. Okay, it went in. So happy at this moment, so happy. Yeah, it just, it, it, I didn't have much difficulty. The only area was, the curve was fine, but in that end, it really did, it was a smooth insertion of the curve area. Along the waistline, there seemed to be a little bit of, 
boldness or I, I eased that in a little bit so and as you can see there's a bit of unleavening here so this feels see how here is kind of really flat and here isn't as much so I'm just going to release that a little bit trick when you're refashioning clothing is that wherever the pattern wherever the pattern pieces feel as though they're not pulling against each other and staying flat that's what you need to go with even though I'm going to cut that away and when I was drafting that part of the facing I did have some idea that will be the case and because there's a little bit more fullness towards the lower end of the jacket which covers the the hip area that was that may be a little bit of an issue when it comes to attaching the lining but let's just see I'm, I'm just happy with the fact that this fits in <laughs> I'm just happy with that so I'm going to go to my sewing machine and then I'm going to sew that all the way around okay I'm now sewing on the inside of the jacket so this is the wrong side put my needle down change the stitching on that. Okay, reverse and then start sewing. So making sure that E stitch is within the seam allowance. And just keep checking that you're not sewing any part of the jacket to the seam. Okay, this project is proving to be challenging. I've sewn the facing to the jacket. Uh, I actually ended up sewing some of the facing <laughs> to the seam line. So I had to unpick that. And I discovered that my machine wasn't stitching properly. You may be able to see that. So I had to yeah sort that out and then do a second row of stitching and yes i'm still going to continue and finish this project because i'm dying to see what this jacket's going to look like um so yeah so that's the stage i'm at now as you can see so all this is going to be ending up inside like so i hope this works so i'm just going to remove or my basting stitch and then I'm going to edge stitch to make sure that the basting stays on the inside and then it will be a case of cutting the lining and then hand sewing it and then it will be done so let's get to removing the stitches for of the basting and then start to Fold the facing to the inside of the jacket and let's see what happens. Okay, it's we're getting there. So that is going to be the last of machine sewing, and we now need to focus on getting the facing towards the inside of the jacket. So it's going to be a case of doing some base stitching all the way around so let me just check these corners oh yes that's that should lie beautifully so that's what i'm looking for yeah, that should be okay it's going to need a good steam and press yeah i think i'm happy with that but we're not at the end just yet going to have to see what's going to happen once it does go on inside the jacket and then it's cutting it out so I am going to get some pins 
and I'm going to pin my facing like so and then just do a base stitch all the way around and then I'll fit the jacket on to see if it's hanging correctly making sure I've got no issues okay so I've got the jacket on what do you think it's a nice curve it's a nice shape I'm happy with it so the facing does work I think the facing gives it a more professional and neater finish and the front we just do the size there yes one of them they're a little bit different on each side one's a bit more curved than the other but no it'll work I like it I think it's yeah I think it's yeah it looks okay I'm happy with that so now all we need to do is cut the lining okay that's the next step okay the next step is cutting of the lining I do have a mannequin a dress form but I'm not going to use it because just in case for any of those of you out there who don't have one it will be a lot easier to do this on a dress form or a mannequin so I decided what I'll do is I'm going to try and achieve that by laying your coat flat down on a flat surface like so and a little bit of guesswork is going to be involved I don't know why I'm making this a lot more easier for myself but I am <laughs> um, no uh, yeah it's, let, let's see if we can do this the whole point is to make sure we, we have a lot of um, lining to play with so lay it flat on a table or surface like so just okay and then make sure it really is flat because you don't want it to be tight you don't want it because if it does it will just distort the shape of the jacket so I'm going to cut somewhere along here and stuff about there it's going to be a little bit more tricky when it comes to actually no let's let's I, I just had a thought if I get my section that I cut out no no we won't go there so yeah we'll stick to one set so I'm just gonna put some pins here so you have a visual of what I'm talking about here so this is where I'll be cutting you see I give myself a lot of fabric here to play with probably start stuff about there and the same here as well And remember there is going to be a little bit more room in the back of the lining so we just want to make sure right let's just cut let's just go ahead and just cut so let's start let's start here And just maneuver the sides like so okay not there really is going to be proving a little bit difficult so I'll just come around to the other end so that I can not long here so Hopefully just giving you a bit of confidence that this can be done. And let's see if it does work. So I'm happy now that 
I have enough lining here for the bottom so that'll just fold that like so yeah, I'm happy with that just coming around here now I think you're just going to have to work in sections because you want to make sure right so get I think the next step we'll get the center back seam and place it there I'm going to put a pin in and I am going to put pins in again just to help you visualize where I'm going to be putting it's probably this will be a bit of a longer process um, but it will be a lot easier if you like I said had or have a mannequin Let's see if we can do it this way and have a few issues and problems. Okay, so you can see where I'm going to be cutting there. So yeah, let's get let's 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 just cut. Go ahead and cut to give myself enough room in case I have to. smaller than the cut out which is good but it's very similar okay so I'm happy with that so it's probably if you don't have anyone to you know to be there when you're trying on and fitting it can be really difficult doing it on your own and there's been many a time when I've try to fit myself and it is difficult but you get there in the end yes happy with that okay I'm going to turn the jacket to the right side and let's see how this will work I'm just going to focus on, at the bottom the bottom section of the jacket first. Okay. Make sure there's enough. Just check to make sure that you know it can just dot the jacket with the lining. Right. So I'm just going to put some pins in there. Just keep that in place. I just don't want this video to be too long that's the problem when you're doing such an advanced technique I think next time let me know in the comments if I should do it in like part one part two part three I think would be a more sensible option to do it in different stages once if I'm doing such a difficult challenge difficult refashioning yeah I think what I'm gonna do here because there's the sleeve lining there, armhole, and it's matching up with that one. So we've got facing. So yeah, there's a there's a lot there that I can take away. So I'm pretty confident in the fact that I'm happy with here. I just want to sort out the curves along this section. So I'm going to cut away a bit more and give myself a bit of of a curved edge here yeah I'm happy with that and do the same on this side as well try not get my 
arms and arms in a way. going to be a case of me having to slash into that like that let's put it there yeah that's better and then now I can roll that inside this side so yeah get in there and do the same here as well so that's starting to look really nice now nice and neat that's what I wanted so I'm going to base that and then do the same for when it comes to the tricky part is going to be the corners here. So I'm going to cut into that a little bit. I'm just going to take little snips. So I just want to release the tension. Feel the tension there and then just put pins in to hold it in place and then just base stitch. Do the same on the other side as well. Make another little snip and then just keep working at it until you've got a shape that is comfortable and you see the facing. Just sit on this side for a minute. So I'm turning that back. All the way around so yeah I'm now going to base this in a different color so that you can see all the way around I'm using the same technique I just used there for the opposite side as well and I'll do the curve separately so I'm going to base this first do the sides and then I'll do the curve so I just wanted to show you how to manage the corners. So I've based the lower section of the jacket and I'm happy with that. Um, so I've just come to this corner here and it is a case of just snipping just a little bit so that you can get it to lie flat. Don't do big ones, just keep doing small ones until it lies flat the way you want it to. And this the facing is a bit still a bit too much fullness there. So I'm just going to do a bit more. Just do it small. I think that's the best approach to do that. Yeah, happy with that. And then tuck it in. And then continue basting. So that's what I'm going to do. And when I come to the curve, I'll show you that section as well. Mm 
Right, so I have based along the bottom of the jacket and I've started to come around this curve here. The problem I think is going to be here. It's going to be this section here. I think I just need to make it a bit more of a curve and if I've got more, a better curve shape that allowed me to kind of apply it to the inside without clipping too much. So yeah, so it'll be a case of me seem happy with how it is here and it's just here but I've given myself a lot of access lining um so yeah I'm gonna get my scissors and I'm going to go for it and I'm going to create more of a curve shape I'm doing this upside down so that you So if I do more of a curve, it just will enable you to manipulate the lining a little bit more onto the facing. Yeah, I think that should be okay. And just do it, when you are trimming away, just do it in small pieces, in small sections. And then it doesn't seem as daunting then. Oh. I hope you saw that. <laughs> That's what I just cut away. So now it will be a case of, see it's starting to lie just that little bit better. And that's what you're looking for. This little pleat that's in there just can retain that put it into place like so so it feels if it feels relaxed then you are more or less on the right track if, if you're finding that the jacket's pulling or the lining's pulling then go back and try and find out what's causing that Yeah, that's a nice shape. So I'm just going to continue um, pinning the rest and basting and then I'll come back and show you. Okay, so I based around that curve there and I've took the facing in. I'm going to pin and we're working on the curve now of the jacket. So. I'll continue pinning and then I'll baste. So I want to make sure that you can see a bit of the facing and you don't want the lining to be too tight because that will distort the jacket. So you want a bit of room left in there. Just, oh look, not to worry, I have to darn that. And just keep them going until you get to the other end. That's what I was talking about. A little, a little hole that I created when I wasn't as careful as what I should have been. Now, in most jackets, you'll find this little pleat here, and that is just to give more room when you're taking your jacket off and on. So make sure you you um, keep keep that in there and fold it through. Yeah, that's fine. And just keep pinning. Okay, I've now completed the basting and it looks good. 
So I'll try it on in a moment so that you can see. See, I've managed to get to the curve because that was where the difficulty was. And I think I've done pretty well with that, I think. And yeah, just make sure when I do my hands, I'll be doing slip stitching in order to attach the lining to the facing. But I'm happy with the results of this. Looks okay. There we go. There is the cutout. That's the front. Just button that. And let's just turn it over. And that's the back. Yeah, happy with that. Make sure I catch that. We have to do really small slip stitching to make sure I catch that and maybe clip into that a little bit more. But no, I'm happy with the way it's turned out. So I'll try that on now. I'm so happy. It's turned out amazingly well. Um, there's my cutouts. There's the other one. I think this one's much more of a, a neater. And being critical, Colleen, it's fine. Oh, but that's really it's turned out really well. Can I have a look at the back? <laughs> that has really worked out well. It feels, it feels funny. <laughs> it feels, yeah, it feels as though the back needs to be, yeah, it feels like the back's missing. But no, that's turned out really well. It really looks professional. That's what I wanted. So it looks as though, you know, I've made the jacket and um, neat, clean finish. So all that is left for me to do is to hand sew it. No, I, I, I like that. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Hmm. So yeah, so all I need to do now is just hand sew it. I'm really happy how that has turned out. Uh, apart from oh, the thing is when you are filming just back when your film crew is you your sound crew is you you know your director is you it can be a bit difficult sometimes to think oh I need to put the camera on and um, this has happened to me a couple of times about three or four times since I've been on my channel where I've um, wanted to put projects out there and then when it comes to editing it's like that doesn't quite miss, make sense because there's a big chunk missing and I still wanted to make sure that this project wouldn't be you know going down that same avenue because like I said it has happened to me a couple of times before but I'm hoping that this section where I wasn't filming that I've made it as clear as I possibly can and if you have any questions please put those in the comments and I'll do my best to I'll do my best to answer those but no it was a a successful project I'm really happy with the way it's turned out yes I know some of you don't like hand sewing but trust me hand sewing is the best way forward if you want your clothing to look really professional it's couture techniques you know you can't get any better than that using hand sewing techniques so I'm gonna sit in for the TV and watch something on TV um, or perhaps on YouTube more um, more, more likely than not and then yeah just take my time hand sewing that into position but like I said if you've got any comments please put those in the comment box below I do apologize for the fact that I missed a section and if you have uh, a tutorial that you want me to do then please put it in the comment box as well this was actually a request tutorial um, of, from a young lady who had a jacket that is kind of out of date and she wanted to modernize it so she didn't ask me to do a cutout but this is my version of modernizing a jacket because cutouts are quite popular at, at the moment so yes i do have a pair of pants that goes with this and i've had another request to do cigarette pants so i'm going to see if i can cheat achieve that with the pants that matches this so if you enjoyed this video tutorial please give it a thumbs up and also I do appreciate the fact that it's quite a long video tutorial and if I'm going to do anything as quite detailed as this I probably will do it as part one part two part three and if you're up for that then please let me know in the comments as well and thank you so much for watching and like I said do share this video do like it please do comment and I'll see you next time